All right, I'm gonna show you how I made this thumbnail. And I've already, I actually filmed this two days ago, but I'm gonna narrate over it now. So I needed a thumb, well, I didn't need a thumbnail. YouTube automatically generates three thumbnails that you can choose from, but I decided for this one, so I could make this video that I would make a thumbnail. And uh, I've already filled out all the information, the tags and everything else. And basically, I found, I had this sketchbook lying open. I don't know what piss tastes like. That's a good, uh, I could use that one. That would've been good. Not so interesting, that the hand one. Uh, if you haven't watched that tea video, you're missing so much. So anyways, I'm gonna open a new file in Clip Studio Paint. It's 1280 by 720. Apologies that this isn't in 1080. I forgot to record it in the right settings. So this is the drawing from a sketchbook that I had found. I thought it was a very absurd picture and the idea of using it in a thumbnail just kind of intrigued me. <laughs> he looks like a very jolly demon or something. I'm not exactly sure what he is. So I wasn't really sure how I wanted to use it, but um, I knew I wanted to use it somehow. I would add color. And I was kind of using as a model for this video, not mukbang, mukbang, that's how he said. Uh, this, these YouTubers kitchen and, or actually their names are Kristen and Jen, <laughs> but their show is called The Kitchen and Jordan Show. So they do a lot of different food for related reviews. And I thought I would try to, you know, steal one of their styles for a thumbnail and somehow it didn't end up like that at all. I wasn't sure what font they were using. Does anyone know what that font is? For like the pumpkin spice mistakes. I thought it was kind of a nice font. There's this kind of style of thumbnails where they put a glow around the edge of people. I've seen that quite a few. Maybe I should get in on that. So back to this guy. I was, if I had like a clear plan of what I was aiming for, this probably wouldn't take 50 minutes, but because I just was kind of messing around and I was watching, I guess I was watching my, my Spanish soap opera. Oh, so what I was gonna do was find in the video which is about 25 minutes long. Somewhere I would find a thumbnail I might be able to use. You don't have to use, obviously, the video. You can use any picture. It doesn't have to be you. It can be whatever's relevant. I wasn't having much luck finding a, an angle that included me. I wanted to have the cup in the picture. And none of the pictures that I found was really jumping out at me. I thought about using the something like that, the Batman mask, but I kind of wanted it to be a secret so that you wouldn't see it in the thumbnail. It had a lot of potential though. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching somebody else like edit my, my video. <laughs> about using the mustaches too but again I decided against it I almost went with this I don't I don't think that's the one I went with but uh, or is it no <laughs> no that's right I went for more of like a unconventional look of my eyes half closed I didn't really like this beanie in the shot, so I didn't use any of these. I think I almost went with that one because I, I like the non-committed look of the, the face. Do 
too much shadows. Still struggling to find something. Maybe I should have gone with one of the mustache ones. I think my favorite part is the very end, the, the image and the music. See, I'm meticulous and <laughs> perfectionist. six minutes in and we still haven't even gotten to any art. Too blurry. I thought about using that, but again, I, I don't know, I thought the, the nose looks kind of strange. Start selling fake mustaches to a store. These are a lot of tints. I think tints are fun. Also, on the edging of fonts, I tend to use a lot of color like a thick layer, a contrast layer, a lot of opposite colors. <laughs> Should use that. Thinking what will complement this guy? expression that would that would fit this that would, could match this guy's who's kind of jolly so I guess the first thing I decided to do is make more contrast between the lines to make it easy to select it as possible I might have done that and if I was doing it again I would ink it and treat this just as like a pencil layer. I think I've realized that thumbnails are kind of like a comic panel. That's the way I think of thumbnails. Because I just grew up reading so many comics and see I lost that on the entire shading on the right side of his, his nose. I must have reselected. Yeah. So I think my my ideas about thumbnails has kind of moved towards. You could treat it as like. You know anything that you can do in a comic panel. Kind of like the, the, it's almost like it's stenciled that level of, I wanted it to look kind of amateurish. I 
think this looks it reminds me most of Johnny Ryan, his art. Maybe a little Robert Crumb or something. I think I was trying to paint and I was using the wrong <laughs> soothing watercolor. I ended up changing it to a, it wasn't working for whatever reason. <clears throat> oh, because if it's a blend tool, it's not a actual color. This thumbnail made me realize that I, I kind of had forgotten about the coloring process that I, that I I used to do some comics and I would color and I tended to just not paint but I would just like do fills so like a shirt would be just one color and kind of like how comics were done until you know through the 1980s or so and then after that they started to get more into like digital painting and more textured looks possible but I kind of realized I, I kind of mess, miss messing around with that, just seeing different color possibilities. I think that's kind of what I want my, what I, what I like about having a YouTube channel is that it allows me to do, to do all these different things, different types of arts that I enjoy. So. I get to, you know, speak, I get to film, I get to edit, I get to, you know, create art, I can make music. It's pretty much an envelope for any kind of digital art form. And I can spend as much time on each, whatever, whichever of those I want to actually work on. I mean, a lot of people don't even do thumbnail design. They just do the automatic thumbnail generator. And I mean, even some like major YouTubers, they don't make their thumbnails. But I would say for the most part, this is such a fun process to like think about what the first thing that a person will encounter when they see in the search results or at the end of a video or alongside in the column. I feel like if you took out the eyebrows and you just see from the eyes down, it looks like a baby. But then the top of it, you see, I don't know what kind of creature it was supposed to be. This, I don't know when I did this drawing. It's probably at least two or three years ago, if not more. back of a, or the inside of your mouth. I don't think people have purple throat, throats. Yeah, just watching this now, I, I realize like, I wanna experiment with this medium more. I also realized I liked just doing these kind of narrations where it's, it's there, if I want to just like chill out and watch, I can do that or I can talk. <clears throat> Maybe I can add a music track. When I was doing this, I was listening to music and when I'm narrating right now, I'm listening to music 
but I have headphones on, so you don't know that, I guess. Maybe I should throw in, yeah, like, I don't know if I have, like, a... I can probably generate some generic music track at some point. And again, I wasn't trying to get this done uh, in a very polished way. I wanted it to look like almost like a like a five year old did it or something. <laughs> I think I look at some point without the lines and different, with different uh, layer filters that I added or correction layers. And uh, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I just kind of liked seeing it come into being and thinking like, what could this be? And what would be someone's first impression of this? I used to do so much like drawing in manga studio when I made comics and uh, the process is fascinating because I remember it would take me sometimes like a few hours to do a page and just that process was I don't know you just kind of have to settle into it and put on some music or put on an audiobook or something and just you know enjoy it and relax into it I think the reason I kind of stopped is because I just didn't want to spend that much time uh, on a computer sitting down. I, I felt like I, I wanted to do more music, so I kind of transitioned away from it, but maybe I could start incorporating it a little more. I mean, I still do thumbnails all the time. I just, it's a lot of, the thing about thumbnails is it's easy to do like a simple thumbnail where you can spend like this 50 minutes on it. But you don't, by any means, you can do a thumbnail in five minutes or less. I guess his natural skin tone or fur, I guess it has fur or is it skin, is, is kind of an off yellow or a yellowish. I'm not sure what animal would that, like a goat? Oh, there, look, look at that. I kind of like that look. I kind of like that darker one. That's the thing about when you, when you work with a lot of layers, you can deselect or select and sometimes it's just, it's just kind of unfortunate you have to pick one. Of course, you could also just use them all in an animation or something like that. That looks pretty close to the finished product. I, bet, I don't think I did much more after this. Or maybe I, I think I did something to the eyes. I didn't want to make it to look too scary. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to frighten people with this thumbnail. I think faces have always been like the most interesting thing for me to draw. And it's just sometimes, you know, you get kind of bored with human features and you wanna, you wanna give it like a look of a character, but you don't want it to be like traditionally human. So you change the ears. I may have to blur some of this out. I 
think there were a few times in this I just kind of paused and if I got up to walk around or what, so I may have to fill in some exciting material if there's some lengthy gaps. Oh yeah, okay, I was getting this. But I ended up accidentally doing, because I, I forget that Clip Studio always, if you put a, a correction layer, it'll do like everything below that with that, all the layers below that with that. So like right away, I didn't realize this, but the contrast is a lot higher. That's why it looks, I look like so white. <laughs> In this picture, I look kind of J.D. Salinger-esque. <laughs> Kitchen and Jorn have a lot of followers. <laughs> they have like, I guess, I mean, I was, when I first discovered their videos, I had never seen any of their stuff that they did. I guess they used to work for BuzzFeed and I'd never seen their stuff there. So within 10 videos, they had over 100,000 subscribers. I'm like, how is this possible? And then I realized they already have an audience. I was kind of trying to pick a font. That's one thing about Clip Studio Paint that I don't like, at least this version is that it doesn't show the fonts like in when I'm editing video in Premiere and I use a font, it'll have a sample of the font in the menu, but Clip Studio Paint, you don't know. So if you want to, if you don't have a specific font in mind, it's just uh, takes forever to just try everything. So it, I find that it's easier just to look beforehand. I was going to say they don't give you a very big sample of the font. It's just ABC. I wanted to make myself, my face as big as possible. I wanted to include the tea, the teacup. And I, I realized that on the left, left hand side, I'm holding it or something. I can't tell if there are two tea bags in there or is that a shadow? I do sometimes put two. This video is so trivial. I kind of like the, uh, <laughs> not that light. It was a little too, uh, if you get, put too much contrast, you can barely see the, the edge of my face and the, the wall behind me. <laughs> I think I was also thinking the face of the left I mean, it doesn't look like it, but Ernie Bushmiller, uh, I love his art and I could kind of see it almost like Sluggo's face in the, the chin. How many subscribers do they have? I think I actually I checked, I, think I saw the last video they did. I think they have over 150,000 subscribers now. I can't even conceive of that many subscribers. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I could conceive of it, but it's just, I don't know, it feels so, so remote from 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> So I guess I went with Adobe Gothic standard. I realized you don't have to put the full title of your video in the thumbnail. That's kind of something where you don't have to put any words at all. Sometimes if you have a provocative image. It has brand names though, like Trader Joe's, you can 
I don't know, you just elicit a response in people right away when they hear it or see it. So I decided to include it. Is there, I don't, I don't remember what the official fonted, oh, I guess I kind of do, just kind of red letters. I felt like this red and yellow didn't go well with uh, the guy on the left. It was just me and the T, I think it would have worked. But I felt like it clashed. I didn't want to cover the T. So I kind of wanted to bring the word T closer to Joe's. if I'm implying like that this guy has been drinking tea or that he wants tea or that he even knows what tea is. I like the way the lines is cut into the his jawline. He seems like both thin and fat at the same time. Even a brighter blue line would look nice. And I feel like at that level of darkness, it starts to look like a bear almost. And I felt like it wasn't what I was going for. And also his eyes look too dark. You can't even see the pupils now. Three minutes left, guys. You're doing great. Uh, based on my previous art tutorial, this will get a few views at the beginning and then it'll get to what I call still water, which is where videos just don't regularly rack with views. If you're watching this and you have a YouTube channel, the three things for getting the viewers uh, kind of organic through organic search that I've discovered are titles, the title of your video, you choose to call it how you format the text, <clears throat> the thumbnail, which we're doing right now, provocative thumbnail, and tags. Hashtags, and I have another video showing how to do hashtags. I know it's like a few back. If you don't know, and actually, that's not hashtags. This is tags but within YouTube, and then they actually let you put hashtags in the title of a video. I didn't talk about that. <clears throat> I felt like that was a little, yeah, I thought it looked better with the dark line. I think I, I, think I went with about that level. <clears throat> the only thing I, I saw was like below the ears, they looked, I hadn't filled in anything on the left. <clears throat> 
even though I joked in this video about, I think I called it episode 803, I actually would love to do, I mean, I want to do more travel or vlogs, you know, travel vlogs, travel vlogs, but uh, I guess my, my destination that I'd most like to go to right now is Japan, but that doesn't look possible until at least several more months. But I've been to Japan once before, and I know they have a lot of uh, teas and tea shops, tea restaurants, and so on. But I think at this point, I just decided I wanted to leave the guy, or kind of angle him a little differently. I wanted to put in some kind of background, maybe. And I wanted to shave a little off the, the left-hand side of the T picture, whatever that is on my finger. I was probably a little high when I did, yeah, I was a little high when I did this. So sometimes trying to figure out what I'm trying to do, keep track of things, I get confused confused and it just takes me a lot longer to remember how to do things. But sometimes I make in interesting mistakes. The one kind of thing in design is that you don't want to have a shape right on the edge. You want to either have it like, like the ear. I wouldn't want the ear right touching the edge. You want it either more off or more on, but you don't want it uh, like edges lining up. I think the thumbnails, the rules don't go on basic design principles. Sometimes it's good to mess things up if you think it's interesting and to see what the reaction is. Should have turned the text off, turned the, the demon head off and just started editing the background with me and get rid of the background. But I don't know what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Because there looks like enough contrast between my face and the background to select. I don't know why I'm doing all this. something like that, that angle. It's such an interesting moment as we watch myself trying to find the best angle for this guy that will allow as much text as possible. The little things that people don't think about.
I didn't want to inflate him or enlarge him too much because I would lose some of the quality and I felt like he was already kind of pixelated from the line selection earlier. If you saw that guy on the left walking down the street, what would you think? I think that those are the two things. If I had a store, I'd sell, I'd sell fake mustaches and masks, like plastic masks of this guy. <laughs> That's my dream store. And maybe a t-shirt with like kind of me holding the T on the left, me on the right. You guys hear my neighbor's dog barking? I hope so. Yeah, this whole video just makes me want to make more, do more art drawing. Maybe in the next one, I'll instead of, you know, copying an image from an old sketchbook, maybe I'll just draw straight in. I haven't included my image, uh, my picture of myself in my tarot readings on the thumbnails for those. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I kind of like making it as theatrical as possible, those. So maybe I should, like, I don't know, add like a, a glow around my, my face and really ham it up. Do people say ham it up anymore? <laughs> Is that pretty antiquated speech? I'm all about antiquated speech. I like the largeness of my face in this thumbnail. I realize that uh, I'm, I'm interested in how much like of a person is shown in a thumbnail. Like from the neck up, from the waist up, what is the optimal, the optimal level for that? becoming aware of these variables.
Something about the way this, this teacup looked didn't look symmetrical to me, the angle of it. So I decided to, to reshape it. Could just be the way that, that the handle attaches there. It has to be more level. Once again, I kind of like when things look a little kind of cheap and shoddy, but I wanted to look a little better than that. I go with that. It seems really too much. And I guess I went with that. <laughs> it's pretty much done, except for the ear, I think, and the background. Cup looks way more asymmetrical than that to me. Whatever. I think that's my motto. <laughs> Any of my videos and my thumbnails, whatever. <laughs> I went with that color. I guess I didn't change the font. I thought I did for some reason. Yellow and red I've used quite a bit. Eight more minutes, guys. <laughs> I'm sitting down as I watch this, and it's, it's very unusual for me to sit for this long, so I'm gonna stand up for a minute. editing on this video if you haven't watched it I did it's like 25 minutes of long and I don't know how I did all that editing it looks like a lot of editing and a lot of it I barely remember doing So now this video is kind of just, it's not doing spectacular. It's, I think it was number four or number five of my last 10 videos at this point in time in terms of views, but it's not getting, it's not raking in the views by any means. Should have left those flex there. I kind of like this looks really cheap. I'm listening to Haydn, some keyboard, like piano music. I wasn't even aware recently until that Haydn did a lot of keyboard music. <laughs> like I thought of it more as like symphonies and maybe string quartets or something, but yeah, he has a lot of keyboard music.
listening to this audiobook called The Language of the Spirit by Jan Swafford. It's pretty, it's a general overview of class, classical music history. It's pretty good, I guess. Going over this with a fine tooth, fine tooth comb. Get it, comb, because I'm doing the hair. Ha ha. I think it's more or less done. I just colored the ears, and then I show the process because I wanted to like actually use this hot off the press, so I, I think I upload, or I, I've already uploaded the video, I just need to make it public and upload the thumbnail. For some reason it wasn't working, what am I on? I'm on the soothing watercolor again, why do I keep doing that? No, it's not blending. Maybe I can find some public domain hide-in for this video. It's harder for me to kind of grasp the feeling behind Haydn compared to Mozart or Beethoven. So maybe he has more subtle emotions or it's just more He's kind of from, like he was kind of raised in more of a Baroque tradition. It's just, he's kind of like straddles the, the border of both Baroque and classical. So I export it, and as usual, I lower the percentage to 90%. So it doesn't, so it, that just turns the file size into a much smaller file size. Even 95%, but you don't have to reduce it at all. Oh, I zoomed out so you could kind of see it on a more typical size view. And at this point, I guess I was done. I decided to go with all caps. I almost called it every Trader's Joe, Trader Joe's Tea reviewed, but I thought tasted might add a, a level of, uh, you know, more of a vis visceral experience, more imagery. Here's my exciting tag, if you want to know how I tag a video. Oh, I already added an end screen too. 
So that's it, and I published it. The end.